Hey guys, this is Cambridge IGCSE Biology, February March 2020, paper 6. Question 1, part A. Beetroot is the large fleshy roots of a beet plant. The cells of beetroot contain a colored pigment. This pigment may leak from the cells if the cell membranes are damaged. A student investigated the effect of temperature on the leakage of pigment from beetroot cells. Step 1. Cylinders of varying lengths were cut from a beetroot. The student was provided with two of the beetroot cylinders. The student cut both cylinders to 3 cm in length. Step 2. The student labeled one test tube C and another test tube H. The student put some cold water to test tube C and some hot water into test tube H. Step 4. The student measured the temperature of the water in test tube C and test tube H. Sections of the thermometers are shown in figure 1.1. This is 21 degrees Celsius and this is 63 degrees Celsius. Step 5. The student put one beetroot cylinder into test tube C and one beetroot cylinder into test tube H. A stopper was placed in each test tube. The student waited for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, the student shook both test tubes. The student observed the color of the liquid in both test tubes. So they've cut the beetroot. So there would have been a leakage since the cell membranes are damaged and the color pigments would have escaped and changed the color of the water from colorless to red. But the difference was that one test tube was cold and the other one was hot. The student's observations are shown in figure 1.2. Test tube C, it's light red. Test tube H, it became dark red. Prepare a table to record the results shown in figure 1.1 and figure 1.2. You might get confused and draw a table with a column heading of test tube and the color, but no, they said use the results shown in figure 1.1 and 1.2. So one column should be from 1.1, which are these, the temperatures of the water used. And then the second column should consist of the color change. You don't need a column for the test tube C and H because that's just represented by the different temperatures. Don't forget to include the unit in the column heading. State the conclusion for these results. For these kind of questions asking for a conclusion, you have to describe what you see in the table. Well, at higher temperatures, the color is darker, meaning more pigment is leaked at higher temperatures. In step 1, the two beetroot cylinders were cut to the same length. Suggest so why this was necessary. So they were cut to 3 cm. This is important because you need to make sure that the surface area that is exposed to water is the same. If there is a bigger surface area for the pigments and the water molecules to move about, then there will be faster rate of diffusion. So you need to make sure that they all have the same surface area. Identify one possible source of error in step 3. Suggest a piece of apparatus that could be used to reduce this error. Going back to step 3, it was when the student put cold water and hot water into test tube. So obviously you gotta say something related to putting the water or just anything about the water. Well, they did not mention the volume of water that they're gonna use. So what if they put 20 cm cube of cold water and 200 cm cube of hot water? Now that's not gonna make it a fair experiment. So you need to make sure you put the same volume of water and the apparatus you can use is a beer red or measuring cylinder, anything that you use to measure the volume of a liquid. Then there is another answer. Well, you know you're using hot water, but you did not mention how you're going to maintain this temperature because as the time passes, the temperature will definitely decrease to the room temperature. So you can try to insulate the container that contains hot water or use a thermostatically controlled water bath to maintain a constant temperature. In step 7, the student shook the test tubes. It was important that the shaking of both test tubes was the same. Suggest so two ways that this could be achieved. 
you kind of have to imagine the shaking process for this. Firstly, you need to shake it for the same amount of time. So let's say you shake it for 30 seconds for test tube C, then you shake it for 30 seconds as well for test tube H. Then the second answer is the intensity of the shaking the test tubes should be the same. Try to shake those two test tubes with same strength or using the same amount of energy to get accurate results. Part B, a student repeated the investigation in question 1A at five different temperatures. They carried out three trials at each temperature. The student measured the percentage of light that passed through the liquids in the test tubes. The colored pigment reduces the percentage of light that can pass through the liquid. The higher the pigment concentration, the less light passes through the liquid. The student's results are shown in table 1.1. The five different temperatures are shown here and three trials and the average at the last column. And these just show the percentage of light that passed through the liquid. And you can see that overall they are decreasing as the temperature increases, meaning at higher temperatures, the pigment concentrations were very high. State the variable that was changed, independent variable in the investigation described in question 1b. What was changed? It's obvious the temperature was changed. So just the ways in which the method described in part 1b is an improvement to the method used in part 1a. Well, how does it differ from the previous question? As they first stated in the first part of the question, for question part b, they use five different temperatures. So they have a wide range of temperatures for you to compare. Then also they carried out the experiment three times. We only did the experiment once in the previous question, so this method is the improved version as the experiments are repeated. And also, they actually measured the percentage of light that passed through. So they have these results in numbers which are more accurate and it's not subjective like something is darker and something is lighter. We have three available answers, you just need to write two. The student decided that the result for trial 2 at 20 degrees Celsius was anomalous. Say what is meant by an anomalous result. Trial 2 at 20 degrees, they're talking about this one. Yeah, suddenly it became 48 degrees Celsius and then increased back to 77. No, this one definitely stands out. So anomalous results means that the result that does not fit the overall pattern or does not fit with the other results. State how the student dealt with the anomalous results when calculating the average value for 20 degrees Celsius. The average value can be found here, 95. You had 94 and 96, and it's quite obvious that 95 is just an average of trial 1 and 3. So the student has not included the result from trial 2 when calculating the average because it's an anomalous result. Plot the line graph and degree of the temperature against the average percentage of light that passes through the liquid using the data in table 1.1. Temperature and the average percentage of light, which are these two columns. Temperature should be in x-axis because it's an independent variable and the average should be y-axis because it's the dependent variable. Temperature starts from 10 to 90 and the average is from 1 to 99. Okay. Since temperature is from 10 to 90 and we have 5 big squares, I think we can just plot one big square as 20. So that will be from 0 to 100. Then for percentage, it's from 1 to 99. And again, we have one, two, three, four, five big squares. One big square can represent 20. Now plot the points and draw the graph. Estimate the percentage of light passing through the liquid at 50 degrees Celsius. Show on your graph how you obtained your estimate. Find 50 degrees Celsius from the graph. It's here, 
then draw a straight vertical line until it reaches the graph that you've drawn and then read off its y coordinate. I got 52%. This depends on your graph. The examiner will check your graph to mark your answer. Question 2. Figure 2.1 is a photograph of a leaf from a beet plant. Part A. Make a large drawing of the leaf shown in figure 2.1. We have a huge space given here. If you have watched my other paper 6 videos, you know the rules. Firstly, you need to occupy at least half, but try to draw to fill at least three quarters of the space given and draw in a single outline like this, for example, not like this. And then there should be absolutely no shading, even if you think that the photo is somehow darker, there should just be no shading. You just draw the outline and the proportions should be correct. For example, for this leaf, this part is approximately like half of the diagram, so you should keep that in mind. Don't draw one part of the leaf too big. And of course, the details, you see these lines on the leaf, yeah, you need to include them. So I'll show how I drew mine. It follows all the rules. I have enough details and you don't need to draw every single detail shown here. It was going to take forever to draw a leaf. This is really just enough and you'll get better if you do more practice. So look for these kind of questions in paper 6 and try drawing lots of these. Measure the length of the line PQ on figure 2.1. Include the unit. Length of line PQ. You just gotta measure this line. You should get 6.7 cm and it can be from 6.6 .6 to 6.8 cm. Calculate the actual length of the leaf using the formula and your measurement. The formula is given. Give your answer to the nearest tall number and include the unit. Well, magnification, it's not given at this part of the question, but it was over here. It's 1.2. 1 1.2 1 .2 equals to length of line PQ, which is 6.7 divided by the actual length, which is something that we need to find. I'll just put this X and do your calculations. It's 5.5833 and so on, but it's nearest tall number, so I'll put it as 6 centimeters. Part B. Some athletes drink beetroot juice because they think it improves their performance. Scientists investigated the effect of drinking 100 cm cube of beetroot juice on the length of time that athletes were able to run at their fastest pace before stopping due to exhaustion. The results of the investigation are shown in figure 2.2. You have the control group and the beetroot group. Explain why a control group was used in this investigation. So the control group is a group of people doing everything the same except that they don't drink the beetroot juice in this case. So they're there to show that the beetroot is the one that causes the effect and not because of any other factors. Suggest a suitable control experiment for this investigation. The control experiment is basically what the control group will do. Like I just said, they need to do everything the same except that they don't drink the beetroot juice. So you can just say no beetroot juice for them or replace beetroot juice with same volume of water. Calculate the percentage increase in the average time athletes were able to run for the beetroot group compared to the control group. Give your answer to one decimal place. The percentage increase. Well, for the control group, they were able to run for 470 seconds and for the beetroot group, they ran for 510 seconds. So to calculate the percentage increase, it should be 510 minus 470 over 470 times 100. It's 8.5% correct to one decimal place. So it's like the difference between the two figures divided by the initial value and multiply it with 100. Part C. An athlete suggested the hypothesis Drinking a greater volume of beetroot juice would increase the length of time that athletes are able to run. Plan an investigation to test this hypothesis. It's a six more question. Here it is. 
Well, just now we were talking about whether the beetroot juice will help the athletes to run faster. Well, it proved that it did. And this time we need to find out whether there is a relationship between the volume and the length of time. It's gonna be pretty similar to the previous experiment. I'll go through them one by one. And don't worry for biology paper 6, for this kind of questions, there are always more than 6 points that you can score from, so you can really get full mark for this. Alright, so since we are trying to find out if the volume affects the length, we should have different volumes of beetroot juice ready for the athletes to drink. You can write down random values for those, like 20 cm cube, 40 cm cube, 60, 80, 100, and so on. But there should be at least two different volumes. Okay, then it's simple. You're just gonna ask them to drink the juice and measure the time that they're running. But of course, you need to give the details. Firstly, there should be a fixed time or a schedule when the athletes drink the juice. Because who knows, maybe if you drink it in the morning, there will be a better effect compared to drinking it at night. So you can just add a random time, like everybody should drink their bitter juice at 2 p.m. every day. And then you're gonna measure their running time. I think the previous question had a good point that we're gonna measure the amount of time that they can run at their maximum speed. So ask them to run at the fastest speed and measure the amount of time that they can run. Now you have to talk about the variables that need to be kept constant. Usually, if you talk about something related to liquid, like this beetroot juice, we always talk about the volume and the concentration. Since the volume is deferred this time, the concentration of beetroot juice should be kept constant. Also, the physical conditions of athletes should be the same. For example, carry out the experiments for only the males or only the females. Maybe both of them, but keep a separate record of them and their diet, their health status, everything should be tried to keep the same. It won't be fair if some people are healthier than the others, then obviously it's not going to be a fair experiment. Also, preferably they should be given the same conditions of exercise. So let's say when the first group starts running when it's sunny outside, then the second group shouldn't run when it's raining outside because that's definitely gonna affect their performance. Then of course, you gotta repeat the experiment to make sure that your results are reliable. You can repeat with the same individuals for many trials or you can just have many participants in each group so you'll have enough results to compare and take the average. Lastly, you can add a safety precaution. They didn't really specify in the mark scheme what are the precautions. Well, what I can think of right now is maybe you can have an ambulance or medical assistance nearby when they're running because maybe when they're running at their maximum speeds, there can be emergency situations. Well, you know, like how in sports competitions, there are always doctors and nurses in station. So yeah. Part D. Athletes often consume energy drinks. Describe how you could test a sample of an energy drink to determine if reducing sugars are present. This is a simple question even if there are lots of space given here. Well, how do we test for the presence of reducing sugars? We use Benedict solution. So add Benedict solution to the sample and hit the mixture. If the reducing sugars are present, you will see a color change. It can be red, orange, green, or yellow depending on the concentration of the reducing sugars. That's the end of this paper. I hope this video helped you guys. If it did, please like and leave a comment. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and God bless you guys. Bye!